Good morning to you on this Pentecost Sunday, on the days we celebrate the birth of the Christian Church. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God I have for you today are the words of Jesus as recorded for us in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, today as we consider your word on this wonderful day of Pentecost, we ask that you would pour out your spirit in you into our hearts. Lord, that you would so fill us with your presence that we would glorify you in everything we do. We ask that you would help us as we open your word today to realize that you love us so much and that you empower us to live this life. We ask your blessing upon our considerations today, proclaiming that we believe that your word that goes forth from your mouth shall never return to you empty, but it will achieve the purpose for which you sent it. We believe your word is truth, and we ask your blessing upon our thoughts today, in Jesus' name. Amen. My beloved friends in the Lord, without power, without energy, it is very difficult to do anything. We need energy in order to function. Our physical body needs energy to move. And we get our energy from the food that we eat. Our motor cars rely upon fuel, either petrol or gas, depending on the car, or maybe diesel. I wrote this sermon sitting in our kitchen at home. And as I looked around the kitchen, I suddenly realized how dependent we are upon electricity. Before I sat down to write the sermon, I put the jug on to boil myself some water to make a cup of tea. It was a rather cloudy morning. It was rather dark in the kitchen, so I flicked on the electric light. While I was writing the sermon, I was multitasking. I put the dishwasher on so the dishes would be washed by the time I finished. The fridge was buzzing away, humming away in the background all of the time. About 10 minutes into my study, I suddenly decided I was hungry. And so I grabbed a piece of fruit bread and popped it in the toaster to toast it. I noticed that the battery on my phone was getting a little bit low, so I thought, well, I better put that on to charge as well. So I plugged that into the PowerPoint. Now, all of the things that I've just mentioned relied upon electricity. If I didn't have electricity, I wouldn't have been able to do any of those things that I just mentioned. And if we just think about it for a moment, we are so heavily reliant upon electricity these days. Without power, we really can't do very much at all. A really good way of thinking about God, the Holy Spirit, is electricity or power or energy. Jesus said to his disciples, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And then you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You shall receive power. In the original Greek, the word that we translate power is dunamis. And this is the word that we get dynamite from. Dynamite is a very powerful force. The Holy Spirit is like dynamite, but even more so. 
The Holy Spirit is the greatest power in the universe. There's nothing more powerful than God, the Holy Spirit. Because you see, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. He is God. He is the third member of the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. On the day of Pentecost, this power was demonstrated in a very real way. He could be heard and he could be seen as he came in to that upper room where the disciples were. We read in Acts chapter 2, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what appeared to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. It was a very dramatic, a very dramatic entrance as the Holy Spirit came and filled these disciples. And the interesting thing was that they began to speak in other tongues, other languages. We read in the next verses, Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not these all men who are speaking Galileans? How is it that each one of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. They were speaking languages they had never learned. They were speaking languages of other nations, of other peoples. There was a real mix of nations there on that day. And they all heard in their own language. They heard them speaking in their own language and they weren't talking about the weather. They weren't talking about sport. They weren't talking about anything not important. They were declaring the wonders of God. They were proclaiming the wonders of God to these people in their own languages. This happened by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now what we need to notice is that they were declaring the wonders of God. When the Holy Spirit speaks, God gets the glory. I want you to remember that. That's a great way to test if it's the Holy Spirit or some other spirit that is speaking. The Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus. The Holy Spirit glorifies God. Jesus said when the Spirit comes, he will lead you into all truth. He will not speak of his own accord. He will speak that which he hears and he will reveal to you the things to come. And then Jesus said that he will honour me. He will take what is mine and will make it known to you. Everything that belongs to the Father belongs to me. And that is why I said he will take what is mine and he will make it known to you. The Holy Spirit always, always honours Jesus. The Holy Spirit always honours God. Beginning on the day of Pentecost, the Christian church began to grow. And it grew very rapidly because the Holy Spirit empowered the believers to share the gospel. I think if there's a word that described the early church, the early believers, their word would be dynamic. They were dynamic. They were on fire. They were enthusiastic about the gospel. They were convinced about the truth. 
And they went forth and they spread the good news in word and deed everywhere they went. And as they preached the message, the Holy Spirit did mighty signs and wonders as well, confirming the truth of the word. If we read the Acts of the Apostles, we see a church that is dynamic. We see a church that is alive. We see a church that is in action, that is, that is functioning, that is growing, that is doing. We see a church that relied upon the power of the Holy Spirit. Sadly, over time, things began to change. It was no longer as dynamic as it should be. People were no longer on fire for God, but began to become lukewarm and some even cold. People began to rely more upon their own wisdom, upon their own power, and less and less upon God. And with that, error began to creep into the doctrines of the church, and the church became divided. The biggest mistake we can make in our life is to rely upon our own wisdom and to ignore God. Solomon rightly said that the one who relies upon his own wisdom is a fool. But the one who relies upon God, he will be saved. The one who relies upon his own wisdom is a fool. I don't know about you, but I really don't try to rely too much on my own memory, upon my own wisdom. As many of you know, I love to bake bread. I started off by just baking white sourdough, and I've baked so much of it that I have the recipe ingrained in my mind. But then I've increased my repertoire and started to make sourdough with seeds and fruit sourdough, a semi-rye sourdough, a rye sourdough, lots of different types. And each bread, each dough has different quantities of flour and salt and water, different amounts. And also, each different type has to be baked at a different temperature. And I never ever rely upon my memory because I sometimes get confused. There's times when I'm tempted to just think, oh, I won't get the book out and have a look. I won't get the recipe because I know what I'm doing. But then a little voice always tells me, don't muck it up. Don't ruin the dough. Don't ruin the bread. So I get the book out and I have a look. And usually I'm glad I, I did because very often what my memory was telling me and what reality is and what I needed to do are two different things. You see, every single dough is a little bit different. So I've learnt to trust the book. God has given us the book. He's given us his word, the Bible. We need to trust it. We need to use it. We need to refer to it very, very often. And then we will have a blessed life. We need to rely upon what God says and not what our mind says or what some other person says. And not only has God given us the Bible, he's gone a step further. He's given us the author to abide in our hearts. Since the day of Pentecost, God the Holy Spirit lives in the heart of every believer. And he is the author of Scripture. Sure, it was written by humans, but they, were, they wrote what God the Holy Spirit told them to write. He gave them the inspiration. He breathed into them the word and they put it down on paper. So he's the author. So when we read the Bible, we not only have God's word, but we have the author living within us who helps us to understand what's written there. We need to, to learn to trust him and to rely upon him and to ask him for the meaning of God's word. Martin Luther so rightly taught that the Holy Spirit works in through and under the Word of God. The Bible and the Holy Spirit cannot be separated. 
The Bible is our energy source. I said at the beginning that we can't function physically without energy. We can't do a lot of things without energy. We can't do anything useful for God without the Holy Spirit. We can't do anything if we're not fed on the Word, if we don't build ourselves up on God's Word. We will not bear fruit for God's kingdom if we don't read the Bible. We need to read it every day. And if we do, then we will have a dynamic faith. Jesus taught very clearly, and we read in John chapter 15, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me, and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Jesus makes it very, very clear that apart from him, we can do nothing. He also makes it clear that if we're not bearing fruit, we may get taken down off the tree. That would not be a good thing. You see, God has designed it and he's given us life that we may bear fruit for his kingdom. We are his workmanship created for good works in Christ Jesus, our Lord, the Apostle Paul wrote. And if we trust in him and if we rely on him, then our life will be dynamic and we will bear fruit. No, no matter how old we are, irrespective of age. Over the years in ministry, I've had the privilege of knowing many, many elderly people. And some I've known who are over 100 years of age. One lady was even 106. And you know, she was still bearing fruit for God's kingdom at the ripe old age of 106. I've known a few people like that. The outward person was old and feeble, but the inner person was young and strong and powerful. And it just said to me, there's no reason. There's no reason why any of us cannot bear fruit to old age if we rely upon the Holy Spirit. If we let him empower us, we can be dynamic at any age. Isn't that wonderful? You see, the key is, the key is trusting. The key is relying upon God and not upon oneself. Let me close our thoughts today with a reminder of what the Bible tells us through Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 40. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles, they will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. I love that scripture. Those who wait upon the Lord, those who read his word, will not grow weary. As we read his word, he empowers us. He makes us dynamic. He renews our strength. So today on the day of Pentecost, let's make a new commitment. Let's renew our commitment to trust in God, to trust in his holy word alone, to daily feed upon this word, to be empowered, to be dynamic, to bear fruit for God's kingdom. That is my prayer for you, my prayer for me today. May God bless you. Amen.
Let's now bow our heads and join together in prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, on this Pentecost Sunday, we worship you, we praise you, we adore you, we thank you. We thank you for your tremendous love. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you fulfilled the promise that you gave. That you told the disciples that after you leave, you will not leave them as orphans. You will not leave them alone. But that you will send the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit. On the day of Pentecost, that promise was fulfilled. You sent the Holy Spirit into the world. And he came with mighty power and empowered those disciples. We thank you that since then, that you, God, the Holy Spirit, abide in the hearts of those who believe in you. We thank you that within us we have your presence, your power. Help us to rely more and more upon you and less and less upon ourselves. Forgive us for the times that we have trusted in our own strength and our own wisdom, our own power. Help us not to do so anymore, but to trust totally in you. We come to you today on the birthday of the Christian Church, and we offer ourselves anew to you as a living sacrifice. We place our lives upon your altar, O Lord. And we pray, fill us anew with your Holy Spirit. Empower us to bear fruit for the kingdom of God. Take our hands and use them. Take our tongues and use them. Take every part of us, Lord, and use us whatever way you want. We thank you for the gifts that you give to us. And we pray that as we use those gifts to serve you, we would bear much fruit for your kingdom and for your glory. On this day, we pray for the whole of the Christian church. We pray, Lord, that you would cleanse your church. We pray that the fire of the Holy Spirit would come and burn away everything that is not of you, that you would empower your servants, Lord, to serve you, that your church would once again be dynamic, living, powerful, united. Lord, we commit it into your hands. And we know that anything that is in your hands is in good hands. Increase our faith. Increase our love. May we serve you, Lord, with a spirit of joy and thanksgiving. We pray for our brothers and sisters in places and countries where they are persecuted for their faith. We ask that you would empower them and strengthen them, encourage them. Forgive those who persecute them, for they do not know what they are doing. Lord, we pray for those who don't know you yet. We pray that you would use us to proclaim your word, that they may come to a true and living faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Father God, we commit all to you, and we thank you, and we bless you, and we praise you. We glorify your name. We pray, Lord, that you would take each one of us by the hand, that you would lead us and empower us. Father God, we commit all to you and we join together all of our prayers in the greatest of all prayers. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Now, my friends, I pray that you have a very wonderful, wonderful Sunday, a wonderful week. May God bless you. May you walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Bring glory 
to Jesus' name, bear much fruit for his kingdom. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.